Welcome, brethren. This is Manny Fernandez with uh, Biblical Science, and uh, I'm about to talk about something which is which every Christian should talk about because uh, all these preachers won't talk about, which which tells me which is a good indicator they're not saved. You have to, I'll tell you what this topic is, but I feel really important to build it up to lead to it. But uh, real, real Christians that are truly saved, three and four minutes of me talking, oh, I know what he's talking about, but I gotta describe it first. See, uh, these prosperity preachers, these uh, modern Christians, these uh, Christians in general, they'll talk about God's love and, and this and that. They'll talk about uh, Jesus loves, 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 loves. But do they know what love really means? Well, I told you love is pain and sacrifice, remember? I told you earlier in the series, my mother, talking about my physical mother, well, there's only one physical mother, loves me because she went through the pain. Remember I told you childbirth, when a woman goes to childbirth, it's more, it's above the pain that a human body, uh, human, there we go again, that a man's body, yeah, she's a species of a man, she's a woman. It's more than a man can bear. It's all our bones breaking at the same time. That's what childbirth feels like to a woman. And sacrifice. She she went two jobs. This is when I was my childhood. She went to two jobs, providing, giving me everything that she didn't have. Pain, childbirth, sacrificing parts of her time, her life to make sure I'm uh, well and give her all the things I need in life. Pain and sacrifice. But it's one more thing. That's not en that's not enough. Remember, God comes in threes. Well, man, that's just two. Love is pain. Love is sacrifice. You're missing one more thing. What is that one more thing? Then I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, but at first, I gotta make my point here. Yeah, this is this is topic. You know, this will really separates to me. I think, not for sure, because I don't know the hearts of men. I'm not God. The saved Christians. Or not on the unsaved Christians. And that word is hell. I told you in the, earlier in my series, if you was watching, uh, hell is a scientific place. Scientifically, hell can be proven. Where is hell? And I got this, like I said, I'm not, I don't steal stuff and don't tell you where I got it from. I got this from Brother Brian again. He's, he should listen to him. Brian, uh, King James Bible Video Ministry. I think his, his screen name is Husky. Look up Post Trip Thieves, that'll take you to his channel. And like I said, I'm even ignorant on this. That means you're in sin, because just ignorant on this, not knowing where hell is, you're in sin, absolutely. But I know it's, it's a physical, real place. I just didn't know where it is. You know where it is? It's proof that I'm not fully sound in doctrine like I thought it was. I'm sitting on top of it. According to scientists, it's in it's in the middle earth. Hey, Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth was in. You guys watched the first <laughs> Lord of the Rings, Fellowship in the Ring, Middle Earth. Well, hell's in Middle Earth. What a coincidence! Yeah. Yes, hell's in the Middle Earth. Doctor Henry Morris, a book called Long War Against God, said that all the people that have died, that has ever lived, remember this world is not billions of years old. It's about 6,000. Everybody that has died, yes, they can fit, physically fit in the middle of the earth. That's what he said. He's a doctor, science, and he's a Bible believer. That's why I call my ministry Biblical Science. Dr. Henry Morris, the book, Long War Against God. I have that book. Let me know if you want it. And that's what he says, not me. He's a doctor. Remember, he's supposed to obey authority. That's why you go to school, but he's also a Bible believer. So he's authority of the world. <laughs> he's authority of God. Okay? Remember, God is providential. It doesn't matter if it's biblical or not biblical. Truth. Truth is biblical. Period. I don't care if it's worldly or not worldly. If it's truth, it's of God. And that's what he said, not me. Yeah, he said all the people that died have died since the beginning of the earth. Yeah, they can fit in the middle earth. And it's exactly, it goes It goes to what Bible is talking about. You know, fire and brimstone. What is fire and brimstone? That's what volcano spews out. Brimstone, sulfur. 
it's a scientific fact where Sodom and Gomorrah is, I don't know where it is, like, what's it called today? They examined the rock. Hey, it was like burnt with sulfur and fire, which is how God destroyed it. That's what they're saying, not me, scientific experts. And, uh, but turn to my article here. There's cases, like I said, you can interpret this, uh, it's fake, blah, blah. But these articles are real. I'll tell you where I got it from. Uh, just look up this 10 scientists who claim to have proof about the existence of God. Scientists. Not Bible believers, not Bible believing Christians. Most of you guys are probably atheists. And in that, they prove that hell exists. I'll give you two instances. But I'll keep going. So what is the third part of uh, loving someone? Hell. Tell them that hell exists and they're going to go there. And I'm guilty of it. Because I, I didn't... I just told you... See how depraved I am? I just told you I love... My mother loves me. But technically, mom, you don't really love your parents. You didn't tell them you're going to hell. That's if you really love someone. But if I do that, they're not going to... Blah, 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 blah. Then you don't really love them. Because they exist. I can't mouth off to you. Oh, hell exists. Blah, 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 blah. But you're not telling people that hell exists. Absolutely. That's how totally depraved I am. Don't tell me some Bible Christians are not cowardly. And that's one of the reasons you're going to hell. Because you're cowardly. I'm experienced. You know, I'm, I'm confessing my sin of, you know, of being a little cowardly. I have to. Now, I'm just not going to go downstairs and say, you're going to hell. Don't worry, God hit witnessing to people. This is how God does, I believe, when it comes to witnessing people. When you talk to someone, God will put it on their heart to like, you know, say something that triggers a light ding in you. That's God's way of saying, You're up. God open that door, you walk in. Like Morpheus says, I can show you the door, you can walk in. So you be in a conversation with friends. I guarantee someone's gonna say, there's no hell. I don't believe in him. Bing! That's God's way of saying, you're up. You can choose to witness to him or not. That's why I know, don't take this as message. I gotta run out there. Everybody's going to hell. No, 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 no. God's timing. He's never early. He's never late. He's just right. Are there times probably I missed the boat of witnessing people about hell? Yes. Are there going to be more? <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> I'm alive for a purpose. I'm not leaving here until I fulfill his his will. Okay, that's probably why I'm still alive. Yeah, I want to take you now, but I'm not witnessing to people about hell. Start to witness to people about hell. And I am. I'm gonna get some gospel tracts to hand out to people. And when, once he opens the door in conversation with people, I am gonna tell them, yes, hell exists. It's funny. People think God exists, but not hell exists. Why? I'll get to those articles later, but I gotta get some things off my chest. Why do you believe God exists and hell not doesn't? Why? Why do you even believe God exists? Why should you be God exists? Never mind the scientific facts. Why do you believe him? Oh, because he's a loving God. He loves me. I don't believe God will send people to hell. Well, do you know? First of all, do you know hell is not for you? Remember, I told you. Don't don't concern. Don't mix in the primary purpose to who generally can benefit. Remember, God has double standards. You know what double standards mean, right? That means I have to go both, I have to be judicious. God is the ultimate judge, both ways. Okay, let me, let me point out, let me illustrate what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ died for the world, no doubt. He died specifically for his church. Now, don't tell me that's not scriptural. There's a, there's a verse there where he says, I think it's Matthew, I pray for something like my elect or my or the body, body of Christ, and then the world. Okay? Jesus died for the sins of mankind, yes. But he primarily was for his body, the body of Christ, his church, his bride that he's going to come and snatch up. Now, let me flip that. Hell is primarily made for this, for the Bible believers. They already know for Satan. Then you know that hell's not made for you. Specifically, it's made for the Satan and his angels. I, I believe as soon as hell and Satan fell, well, God already has foreknowledge, but I'm, I believe as soon as he fell, when he said those I wills, which was in his heart, you know, the devil didn't say I wills. Remember, I told you, as is, 
as a man thinketh, thinketh in his heart, so shall he, he will be. He, did you, how many people knew the devil didn't really say that? Oh, no, no, he said that. No. Because you said that it's in Isaiah. I'm not going to read the verse. Because you say in his heart, I will ascend. Toss them down. See what I mean by sin is intention? You don't have to do it. So is righteousness. You don't have to do it. It's intent. So yeah, just because of that, he, he sent them down. to He cast them down. So I believe hell was created there in the center of the earth. So to summarize, if you really love someone, you suffer pain for them. You sacrifice something in your life. But here's the most important one, which people neglect. Which all these preachers are neglect because God is love, which he is, but they mess this part. If you love somebody, tell them they're going to hell because they're a sinner. Or they might reject, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I feel like calling my, I think I did tell him this. I didn't tell him a cousin of mine that I, I'm witnessing to. But uh, I, I told him hell exists because we started in a conversation. Oh, yeah, let me bring that conversation. And he was really quiet. Hey, you know hell doesn't exist. We called. I'm talking to him. Hell, hell, you know, hey, man, you know hell doesn't exist, right? That's what my cousin told me. Again, we listen by hearsay. I was like, what? Remember, uh, uh, the light comes on. That's not you saying what. That's the Holy Ghost. Remember, you're controlled by the Holy Ghost. If you yield, that's the Holy Ghost saying, there's a door right there, and I walk through it. What? Hell exists. Hell, I can prove scientifically hell exists. Let me break it down to you. I have to, I have to talk to him like slam because, yeah, I believe you got to go down sometime. Not Doesn't mean I swear cuss and use the Lord's name in vain, but I was like, I right. I was like that to him, you know. Let me break it down to you, man. Hell exists. I can scientifically prove it without the Bible. Well, first, let me scientifically prove you got a soul. And, and since God loves threes, I use three scientific facts. You got a soul. Because I can't prove you hell exists if I don't prove a soul, you have a soul. Because we're animals, right? Animals just died. They don't go to hell or heaven. So I proved to him we have a soul. Three scientific facts. And I mentioned this before. The first, uh, the first science experiment. When that guy in Boston, long time ago. Of course, no one talks about this. I wonder why. Uh... He, his, his study was watching people die and weigh them before they die and after they die. You notice a slight change in their weight. Slight change, a couple ounces. What do you know? After he died, he immediately decomposed and lost weight. You know what I'm talking about? That last breath, you know, that, that, oh, there's no light in his eyes. Light? He's blank. He weighed him, <coughs> showed a couple ounces. <coughs> what else could that be but their soul? Remember, we we we're, we're you're very incompetent. I'm talking about people back in the day. They're very incompetent back in the day, a long time ago. I'm talking about in the medieval ages. Why? Because they didn't read their Bible. They used to thought the clouds had no weight. And when Job says the water, the clouds have weight. Well, your soul has weight. How else can you explain it losing the body, human body? Here we go, human body. How how you explain this guy doing these tests to people, the the man's body? Losing weight after death. Where is that weight coming from? It's soul. That's number one. Scientific fact. Uh, two. That you have a soul. Okay. If that's true, you have a soul. Well, here's a other distinction about the guy. I talked about this. This is very important. I would have to repeat it because I guarantee you didn't watch the video. About a guy that was put under. He opened his head up. There was operating on his brain or whatever. He was under. Remember? Your brain feels the pain for the rest of your body, but you know the brain itself doesn't feel pain. So it opened it up. Some cases when people have been operated on, they'll they'll wake, but this guy was put under. On the on the on the brain scan. No activity. That means yeah, he's he's like he's dead almost. But he wasn't. He could he see he could see himself, he knows what the doctor is doing. And the guy, how is that possible? He's put under. Well, that's proof that he's not his body, he's not his mind, he's his soul. Now, I don't remember if he said he was floating around. He knew what was going on, even though physically that's impossible. He's put under, he's sedated. No brain scan activity. No, but he he knew what was going on. Two, that's the second fact, you have a soul. Uh, three, the first law of thermodynamics, which no one talks about, which blows evolution out of the water. Energy cannot be created. Evolution says... 
will create itself. So it has to be an outside force. So evolutions are not scientific people. Of course not. They're religious. Energy cannot be created. So I blew evolution out of the water. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going to argue that point. There's no argument. Or destroyed. What is soul but pure energy? What is a soul? Pure energy. It can't be destroyed. For you Bible believers, you put that to scripture. Whether you're saved or not, you're made in God's image. Saved or not, let us let us make man in the image of us. Who's us? Elohim. What is that? The God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God cannot deny himself. God can't destroy himself. So of course God can't destroy you. He can't. All these things, God can do everything. No. This is how you, if you really know God. There's four things God can't do. He can't deny himself. He can't be taught. He can't sin. The fourth thing, he can't destroy himself. Well, well, these Jehovah Witness saying he can destroy himself. Because you pay for your sins in hell, then you're destroyed. They don't believe in hell. It's a grave. Remember, you're made out of, I told you what you're made out of. Your soul is made out. It's not God, but it's made of, of God. Remember, you're God-like. You're not God, but you're God-like. He brew his breath into you, and it became a living soul. So everybody says, I don't believe in hell. I'm talking about Bible believers, which makes no sense, because if you're a Bible believer, you don't believe in hell exists. You know it exists. He can't destroy himself. Why? Because the science, the laws that he created, says he cannot be created. He can't destroy himself. you got to go somewhere. In quantum theory, quantum physicist says, Okay, I can't believe I can't prove this is a heaven or hell, but it has to be afterlife. Where energy you can't be destroyed. It has to go somewhere. Even new ages admit this. New ages with Christ consciousness, you'll never die. Even new ages, of course, God's providential, his providence. They have to admit, yes, we no, we can't die. All right, we gotta go somewhere. So I'm not. I'll get to the articles last. I'm gonna answer all the questions as much as I can. Okay, hell exists. Okay, you got me. Hell exists. Energy. I have a soul. And hell exists. And I'll, I'll get to the articles later. Uh, you're right. It's in the Bible. It's created for Satan and his demons. But I'm a child of God. I'm made of God. You're a child of God whether you're saved or not. It's just I'm adopted now. I got a name. I'm not a spiritual bastard. That's the difference. You're a child of God whether you know it or not. You're made in his image. You're a divine being. You're God-like. Not a human, God, man. You're God like. So let me answer the question you're probably thinking right now. Why would God send me there? I thought He loved me. He does, but He's also just. I'll tell you why He'll send you there. Well, let me plant this seed in your mind. Bill Hicks always likes to say this. I'm just planting seeds. Let me plant this seed, hope it grows. God created the kitten. I used to love kittens. Uh, this is when you know, remember, Christians not of the world. Well, I'm not saying I hate dogs, but I'm a cat person. The majority of people like dogs. Well, do you know the scientific study behind that? People who like cats uh, are, are more unique. They ask more questions. This is what they're saying. They're more intuitive of life. They question everything. Cat lovers. I like cats more than dogs. Oh, don't get me wrong. I like all creation of God, animals, but I prefer cats. Most people prefer dogs. Mm. Just a thought. Me plant a seed, though. Kitten. Kitten's so nice, they're so cuddly, so beautiful. This is the glory of God. But wait a minute, God created the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Is the seed growing? Is the seed growing now? Is that pretty? What if you saw one? I'm, what if you're a cave? Oh, yeah, yeah. The dinosaurs lived in the existence, existence of man. I'm not going to go into that. Look up Ken Hovind. Di Probably be something today. You don't know. You don't know down and up. How would you know? I just told you how you're fooled. How do you know they don't exist, dinosaurs? Beowulf and all these movies where the guys fighting dragons. Just planting seeds. Reign of Fire with Matthew McConaughey. Dragon Heart. Men with dinosaurs because dragon, remember, dinosaur wasn't, the term dinosaur wasn't invented in Bible times. They called it dragon. Our Bible doesn't talk about dragon. Really? Not, not by the word you thought. Dinosaur, the term dinosaur was in the 1800s. 
But back in the day, they called it dragons. Well, this movie's everywhere. Well, dragons, my knights fighting dragons. Just, but let me not stray off course. Staying on topic here. Hell. <clears throat> uh, he created the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I thought he's gods of love. He is, but just look at the nature of the animals. Cat. Alligator. Kitten. Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's another cuddly puppy. Viper. Uh, Mamba. One of the most deadly snakes. Just saying. God is balance. He's the real scales of justice. Start thinking why you why he will send you to hell. He's just. He can't deny himself. If he can't if he sends okay, if you say God's sending anyone to heaven, then he's a liar. Then what's the point of this book? Let me throw this book. Let me delete this Bible app because it's useless. Because we're judged on that book. God's a liar. I'm just kidding. I'm not saying to hell. I'm sending anybody to heaven. Yeah, I'm just kidding. God he can't do that. Don't tell me God can do everything. He can't deny himself and he can't destroy himself because you're made of God. You're made of his essence, but you're not God. He blew his breath into you. You're, you're, Jesus Christ is begotten, son of God. Okay? You're a child of God. Big difference. He blew his breath into you. Don't tell me you're not God like. So he can't destroy himself. So to keep going on, why why would he send you to hell? Well, I can go on and on. I'm just trying to get the big, the really good arguments. Hey, you make a good point. Well, first of all, you have to know you have to know why people say is God is fair. Well, no, because God was fair. God is not fair. If He was fair, everyone's going to hell already. Why do you mean? Well, it says in the Bible, when Adam sinned, we all sinned. Did you know that? Well, you was in his semen. Remember, there's plenty of scriptures evidence in the Bible that God does not just punish you, he punishes your children. Well, I'm a son of Adam. Adam's my father. Not anymore. Now God's the father. I've been adopted. But when I was unsaved, Adam was my father. Do you know if you're unsaved, Adam's your father, whether you want to admit it or not? When he sinned, you sinned. Okay? God punishes, doesn't just punishes the husbands that are in sin, he punishes his children. Well, I'm a children of, I was a children of Adam. That's number one. I'm setting it up. This is why God will send you to hell. Make no bones about it. Let's go about Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. What really killed Jesus? Planting seeds. Remember, questions are seeds. Jesus answered a question with a question. What what really uh what really killed him? Why it was the Romans. True. Romans they killed him. They're the ones that you saw the passion to Christ. Well, that's a righteous movie. Don't tell me that that's not demonic. Remember, I told you it was movies. What about books? It's all books. Yeah, Christians should not watch movies. What about books? Well, books are okay. They're of God, really. What about The Shack, which Oprah Winfrey likes? That's a book. Go read that book. There's demons and everything. Don't give me that crap. Movies, books, doesn't matter. It's a book. It's edifying. Yeah, I only care about one book, which, by the way, a lot of post-tribbers like The Shack. By William P. Young, a professed Christian. I don't think he is. I think he's a demonic. Got some good edification, more bones than meat. And Oprah Winfrey loves that book, by the way. Anyways, I'm making my point. Okay, I made a point why you have a soul. That's non debatable. That means it can't be destroyed, it has to go somewhere. Well, you didn't prove hell existence yet. You just proved this afterlife. Don't worry. In the articles, I'll prove hell existence. And it's in the middle of the earth, scientifically. So I proved soul that you can't die. I proved that scientifically. I proved you 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 are in sin when Adam sinned. So you're not a good person because you sinned along with Adam. That's three. Now, his son. This is why this is why you owe Jesus Christ your eternal life. You owe it to him. That's why you had to accept him. What really killed him? What really killed him? I gave you a clue by because I said what really killed him. I'll get to that. Romans, yeah, of course Romans killed him. They persecuted him. If you saw Passion of the Christ, they punched him. They mocked him. People keep talking about him. Oh, yeah, they did persecute and torture, but you forgot they mocked him. Here's the king. Here's your king. Give him a crowd of thorns. Dr dress him in purple. They spit so much spit in his face. That's the insult. That's not the hurt. That's the insult you. Slapping him. Who knows? Treat him like he was effeminate, which is a sin. Spit on him all over his face. They, they mocked him. I want to make sure I call it. They mocked him. 
God is not mocked. Yeah, no doubt. Romans. But wait a minute. The Bible believes that reads his Bible. No, it was just following orders. Orders have to be given. Why well, Satan? Yes, but remember, Satan has to use people. The Jews, the Pharisees, those who say they are Jews, but not, they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. Oh no, he's blaming the Jews again. No, no, no. Remember, God's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't care if you are his chosen people. He'll send you to hell. These Pharisees that killed Jesus, they're going to hell. Remember, balance? Don't tell me he enjoyed that in sending his Jews to hell. They are Jews in hell. The Pharisees, other Jews. Don't tell me God don't sell Jews to hell. You know what I used to thought? It's how ignorant I used to be. I'm not a Jew. So I'm definitely going to hell. I don't have a chance to have I wish I was a Jew so I can sin. Don't tell me there's not people like that. God's on selling Jews to hell. Well, I think he sent these Pharisees to hell because Jesus said you're going to hell. The Pharisees are Jews. Make no bones about it. They gave the order. Shall, this is Pilate. Shall I crucify your king? He's not our king. There's no king but Caesar. And if you don't do it, they pressured him. If you don't do it, we'll tell you Caesar. He was pressured into do it. You know Pilate was pressured into kill Jesus Christ? He knew who he was. <laughs> Pressure. Y'all... He rather obey man instead of God. Remember, cowards will be thrown into the lake of fire. I think that's the first. I think that's in the Bible. The cowardly will be thrown into the lake of fire. So he submitted to man. The fear of man brings a snare. So the Jews gave him the order. The Jews killed Christ because he's a he's, he was a demon. Remember, blaspheming blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is unpardonable. Well, that's who. What does that verse mean? Remember I told you dispensation? That wasn't for you. He who blasphemes against the Holy Ghost or are only applying to people who saw him in the flesh. Like if this was back in the day and I'm the Pharisees and I saw Jesus, you're of the devil. Your spirit is of the devil or is real of God. He blasphemed. He's going to hell because he thought it in his heart. Not his mind, in his heart. That's unpardonable. So don't tell me there's no unpardonable sins. Rejecting Christ or just rejecting the Holy Ghost, which is one of the same. That's why they call Holy Ghost the Vicar of Christ, not the Pope. So yeah, so the Jews killed him, Jesus Christ. No, no. I'm getting one, two here. Romans, one. Jews, two. Remember, everything's in threes. God loves threes. Okay, Romans, uh, it's all right. I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah, you're right. Romans killed them. They executed it, no doubt. Jews killed them. The Pharisees, they gave the orders. You better do this or we're going to get Caesar on you. Yeah, true. No, remember, God, that's only two, man. Where's one more? Sin killed Jesus. Let me repeat it one more time. Sin killed Jesus. Sin is death, remember? If Adam never fell... Eve never bit that apple. What's the point of Jesus coming to earth? What's the point? There's no point. This is how God would be if Adam did not fail. He did not obey Satan. Eve was not tempted. Well, tempted is not a sin, but she didn't bit for the apple. Okay, there you go. Adam, Adam did. Man didn't fall. Everything's all good. There's no need for me to send a son. For, for what reason? There's no reason for me to send him. Jesus Christ was sent because of what you are, which is sin. Now it starts sickening. Why? He will send you to hell. Make no bones about it. Yes, he doesn't enjoy it, but he will. Because he's sending a part of him into hell. Think of God. Everybody thinks about God's love. God is love. These, these pharaohical, that's Pharisees, pharaohical preachers, these pharaohical preachers. He's love. He won't do Nah, he won't do that. Ask him, God created a kitten, but he also created a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Really? There's worse animals than that. That's why I love nature shows. There's <laughs> worse animals than Tyrannosaurus Rex. The box jellyfish, the most venomous animal on the planet, created by God. Pricks you with the one one prick of his poisonous dart, you die in seconds. The most deadly that's the most deadliest poison living this living organism on the planet. No one knows about the box jellyfish. Why would God create a, a box of jellyfish? That thing kills in seconds. Which a girl got bit by it in Australia, but she survived. God's providence. 
yeah, I know she got bitten by that, but it's by my will that she survives. Doctor, that's impossible. Once that thing gets you, there's no escaping it. Little girl survives. Praise God in her providence. Look it up. Good girl survives attack by box jellyfish. Anyways, God is not mocked. Kitten transfers Rex. He has to even himself out. Sorry. He's balanced. Even though there's not an equal amount of people in heaven and hell. Is that what you mean? No, using discernment. No, there's more people in heaven than there are going to be hell. Using discernment. Narrow is the gate. Anyways, Jesus was killed by the Romans, Jews. But what was the deciding factor? The source. Sin. It was their sin, their self-righteousness that killed Jesus by sin. Every time when you sin, this is why you should hate sin. Remember, God is love. He said you should hate sin. When you sin, I don't care if it's willful or ignorantly, make sure you think of this. I just sinned. This is the reason why my Savior died. This is the reason why they nailed him to the cross. This is the reason why they mocked him. This is the reason why they stuck that spear in him. This is the reason why he, he scourged to the point where fleshes of, I think that was accurate in that movie, flesh of the skin was being torn out. But notice, they mocked him before they did that. In Passion of the Christ, they didn't just scourge him. Laughing at his face. <laughs> that sin right there. Remember, sin is just intent. They, If you saw Passion of the Christ, those things had hooks. Before he did it, look, I know I'm going, what I'm going to do to you. This was the Roman saying to Jesus. But watch, watch first. See this? Mocking. Sin. Sin is total depravity. That's what. What is sin? Sin is total depravity. I think you, you can't explain that better. It's rebellion. Yes, it's all those things. But it's total depravity. Look. Watch the movie, Passion of Christ. He was laughed before. He didn't just scourge. I mean, he scourge him. Remember, Pilate said, scourge him and let him go. You forget that. You said, no, you're going to crucify him. Forget Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. Uh... Crucify an innocent man. Let this thief go. Depravity. Uh, look, yeah, look at this. You're about to feel this, buddy. Boom. To his skin. Blood was everywhere. He has to be God. If he was only man and not God, he should die right there. Forget the crucifixion. He should have died right there. Blood everywhere. Can you handle scourging? A flogging? Can you handle that? Blood was everywhere. So when you sin, think of that. That's what Chuck Minister said. When you sin, think of, okay, I just sinned. I just told a lie. Well, I'm glad I've been blood washed by the blood of the Lamb. But I felt bad. You should feel bad for sin. You should hate it. This is the reason why he died. Sin killed Jesus. My sin killed Jesus. And I just told you there's no such thing as past, present, and future. There's no such thing as time. But no, but that's a long time ago. No, there's no such thing as time. Time is illusion. What Einstein said. Doesn't matter. My sin right here is the reason why he died in the past. Sin. That's the number one reason. Someone doesn't say sin kills Jesus naturally. Uh, yeah, he might be saved, but he doesn't really know the real reason who killed him. Sin killed him. Yeah, the Romans, the Jews. What drove them? What was their spirit? The, the Antichrist. Sin. What is what is a man of sin? Satan. That should be, if you really, you have common sense, saved and not saved, that should make sense right there. Okay, it makes sense. Let me summarize. Okay, I have a soul. This is what a saved or unsur unsaved person needs to think about. Okay, scientifically. Don't need the Bible, even though I'm proving the Bible. I have a soul. I don't die, therefore. Afterlife. I really don't even need to go to those articles, but I will. <laughs> I already proved the existence of hell. God is just. He can't deny himself. The Bible can't lie. He can't lie. He can't do everything. He can't deny himself. He can't destroy himself. What's funny, you Avengers fans, <laughs> when the doctor's at the, the doctor, whatever, Dr. Brennick, whatever, at the tip of the stock tower, what she said to the girl when he's pointing that spear, this is eight, This is the first Avengers movie. You can't destroy yourself. That's what he said. That's what he said. Not me. Don't tell me movies can't be edifiable. You can't fight against yourself. That's what he said. Of course you can't fight against yourself. You can't destroy yourself. God's saying, look, I can't destroy him. He's made of my essence. I blew the breath, but I can send him somewhere. I can send him somewhere. I can't destroy him. 
I'm, go I'm denying myself if I destroy him. I can't annihilate him to all you Jehovah Witnesses. There's no help. So yeah, sin killed Jesus. Every time you sin, go ahead and sin. You will. I probably will. I got to think. Not just think. Think in my heart. Oh, I just sinned. That's how I told you to pray by him. I just sinned. Even after I made this video, I'm going to sin. I just sinned. This is the reason. I'm trying not to cry. I won't cry. Because people say, oh, he's faking it. So I won't cry. This is the reason. Don't need to. I'm grieving inside. This is the reason my Savior died for me. Sin. My sin. The sin I'm doing right now is the reason why he died in the past. It's not in singing. Your sin killed him. But I didn't sin. No. You didn't. But you're in Adam. When Adam fell, we all fell. For Adam sinned, we all sinned. God punishes not just the, the father, but the children. What children? Children of Adam. Who? You. Unsaved people. So he can't deny himself. He has to send them to hell. I just proved the existence of hell, scientifically. Well, how, No, you didn't do that. You didn't go to the articles. Well, I just said, you're a living soul, and it can't be destroyed. And uh, if I prove... Uh, you're a living soul and you can't be destroyed. No, that means we're going to heaven. Yeah, you proved one soul and I can't be destroyed. You're proving heaven. Yes, you're right. I proved scientifically heaven exists. You still didn't prove hell exists. I'm talking to an unbeliever. A believer knows better, but unbeliever. I'm trying to, it's going to be a real trick. I'm trying to get at both of you guys. You're right. For an unbeliever, I just proved to them God exists in the series. Soul exists. And... Heaven exists because you can't be destroyed. I did not prove hell exists to an unbeliever, to a Christian believer. I already did. But you're right. I didn't. But let's go ahead and describe what the Bible says hell is. It's it's fire and brimstone, which is real. It's a volcanoes. And I just told you what doctor, a scientist, Bible-believing scientist, biblical science, Theoretically, if there is a hell, we can fit in the middle of the earth. All those, how many, 40 billion people have died since the beginning of the earth. Right in the center of the earth, yes, it can fit. It's fire and brimstone. I don't know how hard it is. Exactly what the Bible describes. And the Bible says it's in lower earth. Middle earth, Lord of the Rings. Okay, now I'm talking to unbelievers. Believers, you already know better. You, you shouldn't believe in hell. You should know. Belief's not good enough. Talk about the believers. I don't believe in hell. I know it exists. Here's where my I'm ignorant. I thought hell, I knew it exists, but I didn't thought I was stand sitting right above it. I didn't know that. I'm totally depraved. Okay, but you're saved. That doesn't matter. I wasn't reading my Bible like I should. You should be obsessed with the Bible, knowing in and out. Okay, it's in lower Earth. So someone will tell me, where's hell? Hell doesn't exist at a scientifically place. Yes, yeah, in the lower earth. Now we'll get to these articles. You're right, unbeliever. I can't, this is just hearsay. I can't, unless we go, I take you to where a volcano is, which is a, volcanoes are openings of hell. Because that's what volcanoes are made out of. And what, that's what lava is made out of, fire, brimstone. That's what it's made out of. I'll tell you some interesting stories of scientists being near volcanoes. This is documented. Now you can say, for unbeliever, well, that's just hearsay. But just food for thought. Food for thought. I like that term. What does that mean, food for thought? You figure it out. I'm not t like I said, I'm not spoon feeding you. This is to plant a seed for you to be curious, question everything. This is a. Uh, this is not my notes. This is an article. I don't know if you can see that. From oddee.com. Ten scientists who claim to have proof about the existence of God. Scientists, not Bible believers. I'm talking to unbelievers. This is proof of scientific proof of hell. Because even I wouldn't believe it. If they said they were Bible believers, I wouldn't believe it. Now they're, they're biased, of course. They're Bible believers. No. This is neutral. This is secular. Scientists. It doesn't say they're Bible believers here. But look how it starts. <laughs> Both believers and atheists are constantly waiting for clear evidence to confirm or deny the existence of God. 
to by uh, there the list about theories and tests conducted by scientists and from different fields that are intended to demonstrate the existence of God, heaven, and hell. Well, I already proved the existence of God in my series of Fibonacci sequence of golden ratio, patterns in nature, undeniable, irrefutable. I proved the existence of heaven. You can't be destroyed. So I'm going to heaven. Everyone's going to heaven. Yeah. Well, not everyone. Some people. So I just... Just by that, I scientifically proved heaven and that God and heaven exists because you can't be destroyed. Your soul it goes against the law of thermodynamics. I'll scientifically prove hell exists. Here's the first article. The scientist who dug into hell into Siberia and recorded the cries of damned souls. 1989. According to legend, it's a myth. <laughs> oh, I mean, I gotta laugh. Sorry. It's not fun. That's the funny. That's how depraved I am. This is no laughing matter. But according to legend, according, this is speculative. In 1989, a team of Russian scientists who were operating under the direction of Dr. Azakov drilled a hole that was nine miles deep in an unnamed place in Siberia. After breaking through into a cavity, intrigued by this unexpected discovery, they lowered an extremely heat tolerant microphone. That's a microphone they dug in the they put in the hole that it could withstand heat. That could withstand and the Middle Earth is really hot. That can withstand heat. They, they put the nine miles. That's really deep. A hole. Put a microphone down there. Uh with along with sensory equipment into the well. They listened and recorded purportedly I guess that's on purpose. The tormented screams of desperate people. Oh, I don't believe that. Don't believe it. I'm talking to an unsaved person. The saved person knows better. The second surprise was the high temperature. That's what the, I guess the sensory is for. It's a thermometer that they discovered at the Earth's center, which was over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The conclusion was that they had opened the hole into hell. Let me see. I guess that, yeah, that was it. There's also another one. This one, I can give you that. I'm just planting seeds. A guy that was on the operating table going clear. He was giving, he was coming in and out of, you know, coma. He's in a coma. He's out. This is what he said, not me. <laughs> he's like this. Like, what was that? He was in hell momentarily. But he was clinging to life, coming back. No, don't send me back there. Do, do what you can. I think he's a rich guy. Do what you can to bring back to life. I don't want to go there. No, no. That's what he's doing. Like paranoid. Could he be demon possessed? Possibly. But I'm using discernment. Holy Ghost guides you to all truth. He's experiencing hell. That was two. That's another one. That you can look up. Man who claims to saw he was briefly in hell. And read the article. I'm not going to Go over everything. Here's another one. This I'm not talking because what do I know? I live with my parents. What does he know? I'm going to what scientists, the, the expert says. If I'm talking, I'm just going to give my thoughts. But this is from now on. It's all documented. The chemistry student who demonstrated that heaven and hell exist. I don't know how you can do that, but let's see. Yeah, he said he used Boyle's Law. I'm not going to read everything. This is a, I guess this is a chemist student. Again, does it say here he's born again? Oh, he's Bible believer. He's a chem chemist student. First, we need to know the mass of hell is changing in time. So we need to know the rate at which souls are moving into hell and the rate at which they are leaving. I think we can safely assume that once a soul gets to hell, it will not leave everlasting fire. Oh, we burn up and then we did get destroyed, really. Therefore, no souls are leaving. Remember. There's no way, I'm not lying, there's no way of saying he's a Bible believer. As for no, as for how many souls are entering hell, let's look at the different religions that exist in hell, which I don't need to go on. All of these religions are going to hell. So, yeah, he says, I'm going to skip that. Like I said, only ones that are edifying. But he says, yeah, he proves through his experiment, yeah, we can go to hell. This proves the existence of God. I'm not going to go in that. Yeah. Proving that God exists, it's like it's like proving 
to you that uh, you're gonna die physically like your body physically gonna die. that's how stupid it is when someone tells me God doesn't exist in the f in his heart the fool says there's no God God's calling you stupid not me God is so if you need God scientific scientific evidence that he exists you're basically saying physically you're immortal no I don't die or you need any proof can you prove that physically people die are you kidding me that's what you're saying. I don't believe in God. So that, that means you're saying, I need physical proof that I'm going to physically die. Because I think I'm going to live forever. Physically. So I'm not even going to go to God exists. Let me see what I wrote. I'm looking for science. Yeah, this is all existence of God. Existence of God. All of them. Let's go to the other one. Another article. I'll wrap up with this. AV1611.org. www.av1611.org. Slash. Forward, forward slash. The slash that's on your question mark. Hell.html. Man, you described that descriptively because I want you to read it. Make sure you get there. Yeah, here's that guy I was talking about. <clears throat> Entitled Beyond Death. Beyond Death's Door. That's a book, obviously. By Dr. Maurice Rawlings. Doesn't say he's a Bible believer. A specialist in internal medicine and cardiovascular disease. Resuscitated. That means someone... Remember, you can be clinically dead. More proof to existence for you have a soul. Okay, you have no soul. How you explain to you that are clinically dead? You know what clinically dead means? No heartbeat. And they brought him back to life because common sense. Most doctors know we have souls. Come on. That we are souls. We don't have. There's those trickery of the words. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. Explain people 60 minutes they were dead. They, okay, he's clinically dead. Let's bring him back. Okay, soul come back to his body. He's not. They're not saying that. They're not a rich doctor. But that's what's happening. Okay, you're, you're, you're the soul. Okay, let me go back in the body. It's not my time. God says it's not time yet. Explain people that are clinically dead for 16 minutes. Some for 30. No heartbeat. So he had to resuscitate him. Many people who had been clinically dead, Dr. Rollins, a devout atheist. Devout. You know what devout means? He's an atheist. In his heart, as a man thinketh, thinketh in his heart, show as he will be. So he's not an atheist. Is this sinking in? He's a devout atheist. I don't believe you. Go to the article. AV1611.org slash hell dot HTML. AV1611. A devout atheist. Considered all religion hocus pocus, whatever. There's no hell. That's what the Seven Day Adventists say. There's no hell. Jehovah Witness. There's no hell. Don't tell me they didn't say that because I had one come to my door once. You know, there's no hell. You should be destroyed. There's no hell. Oh, there's a grave. You suffer and then you get destroyed. And death, nothing more than a painless extinction. Extinction. But something happened in 1907. They brought a dramatic change in the life of Dr. Rawlings. He was resuscitating a man, terrified and screaming, descending down into the flames of hell. This is in quotations. I guess this is the guy that he's trying to resuscitate. I guess he's using defibrillator. This is what the guy's saying. Each time he's describing what the guy's saying. Each time he regained heartbeat and respiration, that means he's coming in and out of his body. His soul's leaving, coming back. Leaving, coming back. Regained heartbeat and respiration, the patient screamed, I'm in hell. He was terrified and pleaded with him to with with me to help him. I was scared to death. Then I noticed a generously alarmed look on his face. He had a terrified look worse than the expression seen in death. This patient had a grotesque grimace expressing sheer horror. His pupils were dilated. He was perspiring and trembling. Perspiring fire. Whew. Hot as hell. 
He looked as if his hair was on end. Mm. Yep. So I saw a ghost. My hair standing on end. I got goosebumps. Then still another strange thing happened. He said, don't you understand? I'm hell. Don't let me go back to hell. This man was serious. And he finally occurred to me that he was indeed in trouble. He was in panic like i never seen before. There you go. The account of a devout atheist. He said one more time. Devout atheist to a core in the heart. Atheists proved the existence of hell based on what that guy said. Could it be demon possessed? Probably. Demon oppressed? Probably. Who knows? Food for thought. Just saying. Dr. Rawlings said no one who could have heard his screams and saw the look of the terror on his face could doubt for a single minute that he was actually in a place called hell. The Bible continually warns of a place called hell. You guys don't believe in the Bible, right? It's talking about Bible now. Me. So let me disregard it. It's an allegorical. I'm talking to unbelievers. It's an allegorical, so don't take my words out of context. I'm talking to unbelievers, unsaved people. This is an allegorical fairy tale. Sorry to be sarcastic. This is how you guys interpret the Bible like I used to. It's an allegory fairy tale book. That's why I threw it away when I was a Catholic. Threw that book in the garbage where it belonged. It probably did belong there because I was a Catholic Bible. So I'm not going to quote scriptures, but I'm going to quote to you more secular stuff. On page 89, I, on the page 85, Beyond Death's Door. Should this be a book an atheist should get? I think absolutely. Here's a book that both people should get. First, this book called King James Bible, both people should get. That's number one. That's your final authority. But don't tell me there are not other authorities out there. Your Bible is your final authority, not your own. Only There's a big difference. Get uh, Dr. Henry Morris, Long War Against God. I can give you that book. And I probably want to get this book, but why do I need it? I know hell. I know hell exists. Beyond Death's Door. I don't know who it's by. I think it's yeah, Dr. Rawlings. What do you know? Great minds think alike. He's quoting Dr. Henry Morris. I'm not kidding. I didn't know he's going to quote him. Scientist and Bible teacher Henry Morris also agrees that the Bible plainly teaches that hell is in the earth. So far as we know, we can tell from Scripture. Remember, he's a doctor. He's somewhere in the heart of the earth itself called the pit. The writers certainly themselves believe hell to be real and geographically beneath the Earth's surface. RZA came out with a rap album <laughs> called Beneath the Earth's Surface. Don't tell me he didn't because I had it. He used to be a big Wu-Tang fan. Not anymore. They have the devil. I, God delivered me for rap. I'm not going to not gonna say I'm not going to li listen to rap because he knows it better. I like classical music now, but God was talking to me. Hey, but he's going like this. Hey, a long time ago. This is when I'm depraved, really depraved and unsaved. Beneath the surface. Why is he called his album that? Beneath the surface. To say this is not scientific is to assume science knows much more about the Earth's interior than this is the actual case. The Great Pit Hell will only need to be about 100 miles or less in dia diameter to contain with much room to spare. All the 40 billion or so people who have ever lived assuming through their spiritual bodies are the same size as their physical bodies. Dr. Henry Mor Dr. Henry Morris, The Bible Has an Answer. That's another book. The Birmingham News. Okay, when you're getting remember, this is an unsaved person speaking. When you're gonna get to the the non the non biblical stuff. Okay, the Bible's a fairy tale book. Calm down. Birmingham News article. Let's see here. Caspar Pusser, a famous 14th century astronomer and a physician. He's not a Bible believer. This is an astronomer, astronomer, physician. Also researched and documented the, volca the volcano eruptions at Hecla Fell, wrote something very frightening information in his research findings. Pusser claims that fearful howlings, weeping, and gnashing of teeth could be heard for many miles as these volcanoes erupted. Volcano? Are you saying volcanoes are gateways to hell? Absolutely. It's funny, there's a movie called Gates of Hell. Out of the bombless abyss, 
Heclafil, or rather out of hell itself, rise melancholy cries and loud wailing, so these can be heard for many miles around. There may be heard in the mountain fearful howlings, weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not just him. You know, there's, there's like I said, I love nature shows. What do you know? There was a nature show about the deepest chasm in the earth. It's called the gates of hell, eye of hell. I'm not making it up. I don't know where it is, South America, Mexico. They call it the gates of hell. There's a documentary on the History Channel, gates of hell. Literal gates of hell. And I was ignorant. Ah, whatever. Yeah, I know hell exists, but it's in the earth? No. Physically in the earth? Because it doesn't have to be there. God can put hell wherever he wants. He can put hell on Mars. He can put hell in the universe. No, physically, hell exists underneath the earth. Now, probably subconsciously I thought it was, but this thinking hell is really underneath your feet, and it is. Okay? The, the, the fearsome noises that issued from their volcanoes were certainly thought to be screams of tormented souls in the fires below. That's Harold Har Sigurdsson, Melting the Earth, The History of Ideas of Volcanic Eruptions. In this, in, inside this earth, this very moment, there are millions of lost, tormented souls, burning, weeping, wailing without any hope whatsoever. It's more Bible stuff, so I won't uh, burden you with that for you unbelievers. Because I'm trying to make... I do this. I know you believers are saying you need to use the Bible on them. Blah, blah. No, no, no. I'm talking to. I'm. 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 I'm not using scripture to unbelievers because I don't have to really. This is to prove that you can't run away from God. He's biblical and he's not biblical. He can be proved with biblical scripture or non-biblical scripture. Heaven can prove be proved with biblical scripture or non-biblical scripture. Hell can be proved with biblical scripture and non-biblical accounts like these articles. You can't run away. I found that the hard way. That's why he picked my heart. I said, okay. You know how depraved I am? Like I said, I knew God would exist and I couldn't be destroyed when I was unsaved. You see how totally depraved, totally depraved I am? Scientists really discovered cracks on the ocean floor. Scientists. Where fire was leaking out. Ocean floor fire? Doesn't make sense. Do you know what they found around these fire-breathing vents in the crust? Eight foot long worms found no other place in the world. The book, The Deep Sea by Joseph Wallace, perhaps the strangest of ocean creatures, recently discovered discovered Arifteia, the giant tube worms, only found near deep sea vents. What well, do you know? Jesus was caught talking about worms in John 8 4 4. Non biblical, biblical. Talking about worms. Yeah, these eight feet foot long earth worms, not earthworms, eight foot long worms in the it, out of the holes in the depths of the sea. What are these? And Jesus Christ said, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So as I have as I need it keeps going on and on as if I know it. Let me describe the hell that you're going to. This is for, this is for well, self-righteous people is not gonna believe this because the number one number one type of people that are in hell are the self-righteous people. Make no bones about it. I'm a good yeah. I believe you. God exists. This is self-righteous person. I believe God exists. You're right. But I'm a good person. I'm not totally depraved. Depraved. Yeah, I watched that show you're talking about. Deadly women. About women eating people, ripping out the baby women's stomach out, killing the babies. But yeah, that's them. That's not me. I'm not totally depraved like him. I'm a good person. I did more good works than bad. This is a self righteous person. I didn't sin. What are you talking about? Adam sinned. I didn't sin. If you, it's either you believe in God fully or you don't. I'm talking to self righteous people. If you believe God fully, obey his word. Okay, remember Jesus was a historical figure. So if he died and suffered, it gotta be a good reason God sent him to the earth to conquer sin, which killed him. He became what killed him. You know that? That's why he said, "Father, why are you forsaken me on the cross?" Because he became what killed him. He became sin. Sorry, son. I gotta.
God can do this to his son. What can you think he'll do to you? Oh, God's a good person. He won't do this. Look what he did to his son, which is him. Sorry, son. I have to do this. I you didn't enjoy it. I have to do this. I love man. I love man. That's why I gave him dominion on the earth. I have to do this. I, I not have to. God doesn't owe us grace. I want to do this because I love. What love comes out of want, not have. I want to do this for my for man. Go to the cross. I will forsake you. You will become what I hate. So I have to leave you alone. He became what killed him. He became what he was sent for. Jesus Christ became sin. Sign sinking, righteous people. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I can't get through you. Because number one, <laughs> I hope God can get through you. I can't get through you. Only he can get through you. Because number one, what's, how many, okay, what do you have? Are everybody in hell? Who are the most types of people in hell? Righteous people. Self-righteous people. I don't need Jesus Christ's righteousness. I got my own. I'm a good person. Those are the Jesuits. I'm a good person. We don't need Jesus Christ. Yeah, I believe in God and I believe I can't be destroyed. But Jesuits are more depraved. They believe in Jesus Christ. That's how really depraved they are. They believe in Jesus Christ. They got the mind of Christ, but they don't got his heart. So they choose to serve Satan. Jesuit order. So your self-righteous people, you probably won't get it, but I'm, I'm pricking the heart. I'm convicting of anybody else. The cowardly who's going to hell. Anybody else going to hell. Hmm. Yeah. You guys probably, I, I am getting through. So let me describe hell what it is according to the Bible. Hell is a place of fire. Number one. Uh, it's fire. Volcanoes. What's a volcano? Fire. Bible, it's located in the middle of the earth. Hearing all those people. Oh, they're just, they're paranoid. They're demon possessed. With this recording sounds of people. Weeping and gnashing the teeth. You can hear people from volcanoes. Uh, come on. Hell doesn't exist. What are you talking about? Hell doesn't exist. That's they're, they're crazy. Middle of the earth. We keep on describing it. Made out of brimstone. Funny. That's what lava volcanoes are made out of. Brimstone. Oh, here we go. More articles. Read the following. They dig into hell. The following article appeared in the well-respected Finland newspaper. Researchers record the screams of the damned. I don't see this in news because they are the devil. I wish you could see the article. It says that. Can you see that? It's not. Oh, you're reading your notes. This is an article. This is an article. Researchers record the screams of the damned. As a communist, I don't believe in heaven and hell. Of course, communism wasn't created by the Jews. It was created by Sir Thomas More. That's what the red in the flag means. That's why they have the red mass. And what is their primary belief? There is no God. Government is God. They don't believe in God. If you're a communist at heart, you don't believe in God. As a communist, I don't believe in heaven and hell, Bible, and, or the Bible. But as a scientist, but... I now believe in hell. This is what Azakoff. Oh, I already told you about the article. Now here's the actual article. Here's Dr. Azakoff again. He's, a, he's an atheist, obviously. He doesn't believe in heaven and hell. Needless to say, we were shocked to make such a discovery, but we know what we saw and we know what we heard. And we are absolutely convinced that we drilled through the gates of hell. Dr. Azakoff continued. The drill suddenly began to rotate widely indicating that we had reached a large empty pocket or cavern temperature sensors are showed a dramatic increase i'm just repeating myself this is the actual article in heat or to a 2000 degrees fahrenheit we lowered a microphone designed to detect the sounds of plate movements i guess that's what we do when they were studying tectonic plate movements shifts in tectonic plates earthquakes that's what they were intending to do. Designed to detect the sounds of plate movements down the shaft. But instead of the plate movements, we heard a human voice. Not a human voice, a man's voice. Screaming in pain. At first, we thought the sound was coming from our own equipment. But when we made adjustments, wor worst of our suspicions were confirmed. The screams weren't those of a single human. 
There were screams of millions of humans. There we go against humans. You remember I told you? You means God. So you're telling you're a God man when you're a human being, you're not a human being. Christ is, can be called a human. He's a God man. God man manifested in the flesh. I'm not a human. I'm a man. God created man. God didn't create a human. It's a place of torment. Or you just said they were screaming in pain. Not, yay! I'm a reigning in hell. It's okay to go reign in hell. I'm going to reign in hell. Devil's the king of hell. He's going to reign on his throne. No, suffering. Torment. It's a place of torment. It will be beyond being anything humanly imaginable. You will see hell. You will smell hell. You will breathe hell. You will hear hell. You will feel hell. You will be in hell. That's what the article is saying. Not me. But uh, I agree. Hell is forever. Everlasting. Bible says that, of course. It's everlasting. Oh, my friend, hell is forever. Jesus Christ took hell very serious. Of course he did, because he's God. He's all man, but he's God. He created it. Remember, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost are three distinct beings, but they're one. So God the Father created hell. Jesus Christ created hell. The Holy Ghost created hell. So I think I would listen to this Jesus Christ. He talked more about hell than anything else. Look at the New Testament. What did Jesus Christ keep talking about? Hell? Absolutely correct. If hell is not real, then Jesus Christ is a liar. To all you guys that are Jehovah's Witnesses and Seven Day Adventists, don't believe in hell. Roman Catholics, they don't believe in hell either. They believe in purgatory. Don't tell me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I was an eight years Roman Catholic. They believe in purgatory. Yeah, I say this. I say this much. I, I, I repent. Whatever. Blah blah. I know I'm gonna such idiotic, and I go to heaven. But if I go to hell, I pay for my sins, and then God destroys me. That's what they're saying. You, it's one or the other. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you believe He's God, yes, then you have to believe what He says, because He's not a liar. There's no sin in him. God cannot lie. What is he talking about? Hell. Everlasting. And he keeps coming up this year. Well, how do I get out of here? How, how do we get out of here to hell? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Like I said, what put on my heart is God, but he spoke through that guy I was talking about, Brian, because he was talking about hell. God said, go ahead and you talk about it. Well, he already did it, Lord. He already did it, Lord. Son, I haven't been, not made all of you the same. I'm not saying I heard him. You sink in my thoughts. You might say things in a way that you might get to someone that he can't. Remember, fellowship. Everybody doesn't know everything. This is what you need to be saved. Right, Self-righteous people, I doubt you're listening at this point. But everybody else, realize you're a sinner. We all have sinned. Realize you cannot save yourself, but the Jesuits think otherwise. Yeah, I can save myself. Self-righteous people. They're self-righteous because they believe they can save themselves. Why not? They're a human being. <laughs> I'm a God man. I, that's why I call myself. You know, every time you say a word, you're programming your, your mind. Be really careful for the words come out of your mouth. You're programming yourself. I'm talking about unsaved people. Saved people have discernment. They know better the words coming out of their mouth. You call your, even though they use human being language that as a term. I was saying it in this very video. You're not a human. You're not a God man. Realize you can't save yourself. Realize that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins. Let me break that down. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay. Pay. Hell's called debtor's prison. Jesus Christ, remember, no one comes to me unless the Father draws him. The Father, the Holy Ghost, is speaking through me, speaking to you. You're saying that God speaks? Well, God's influenced me to say to you, because what is the Bible? It's written by man, influenced by God. So you're saying God's influenced you to say this? Absolutely. Jesus Christ paid for your sins. He gave you a check. 
Remember, I'm using terms of commerce because you said that word pay. God is knocking on your heart. Hey, I got this, my son, Jesus Christ. You can't go to heaven on your own sins. You can do all the righteousness you can. You can't do it. You're a totally depraved, wretched thing. No problem, though. Remember, I don't have to do this. I wanted to do this. Oh, the devil's programs are coming up on my computer because the devil doesn't want me to tell you this. My computer is acting funny. No, God's will is providence. So let me turn that off. There's programming in my computer. He's saying, uh, Jesus Christ died for you. He paid for your sins. He became what killed him. Let me say that one more time. He became sin, what killed him. Sin. I thought the Romans killed him and the Jews. Yes, they did. What was the force that drove him? May the force be with you. Sin. He became what killed him. Don't worry, I can pay for it. This everlasting debt can be paid by everlasting righteousness. One problem. How can you cash a check? You got to endorse it. Jesus Christ signed his signature in blood. Pay to the order of you, your name. The amount is an infinite sign, infinite symbol. It has to be from God. I'm figuratively speaking. I'm not saying you're going to physically see a check. I'm talking hypothetically here. It's infinite debt. How do I use this check? Remember, he died for everyone. I don't want to hear this crap. God only died for some people. God wished that we all have sinned. He wished that all, all, doesn't mean that type of all. There you go. We twist the words. All have sinned. All, he wished all must come to repentance. That checks for everywhere. Everyone, everyone has this check. You had the, you had the check when you was born. Everyone has a check. I had a check. I didn't want it though. I'm self-righteous. God showed me this check a long time ago. This is how, this is how God does to you. He said, give us a check. Give us a check. What is this check? The check is the imputed righteousness. He paid for it. He paid for you in blood. Written in blood. Jesus Christ's blood. Infinite sign. It has no dollar amount. There you go. There you go. And we as self-righteous people, ripping it up. Send it all you want. Remember what the Bible said. God will show compassion to who he shows compassion. I told that check a lot of times. Why does he keep saying it? I'm not saying it in my mind, but subconsciously I'm saying it in my mind. I just don't know it. Remember, I'm self-righteous. I'm a good man. Ripping the check. Keep sending the checks. Send it. Keep sending it. Rip. Keep sending the checks. Rip. Rip it up. I'll rip it up. I'll rip it up. Okay, I don't want to hear it. One day on February 8th, 2015, he sent me that check again. Prick my heart. I broke down in chairs. Okay. Okay. I yield. Think of, remember we used to do this as kids? Okay, I give up. I give up. That's what God does to you. Now, he doesn't have to do that to anyone. Some people, he does it more. Okay, and he lets go. Okay. He's a... Me heart in his heart, reprobate mind. He did it for me for a long time. I'm 35 years old. He did it to me like this. What is he, he's convicting me? Okay, I yield. Like wrestling, I tapped out. I tapped out on February 8, 2015. I tapped out. Okay, I'm si I'm endorsing. I'm not signing. I'm not Jesus Christ. How does the check work? The guy that signs it on the front is the guy that the funds are coming from. What funds? His imputed righteousness. Those funds in blood. But a check for you to use, you got to endorse it. I have this check. No, what you did to earn that check? Nothing. What can you do to, to justify? Nothing. It's a free gift. It's a gift. I endorsed it on that day. Now it's, my, now it's not mine yet, but it's my inheritance. I'm, I signed the check. I endorsed it. But I didn't use it yet. When do you use it? Funny. Funny she ask. You use it. When you're at the you when you're at the gates. And Jesus Christ says, check please. I it's Jesus gonna say this, no, but I'm hypothetically speaking, check please. Self-righteous person, here's my check. Okay, see here. Okay, first of all, you signed this yourself. This this funds coming from you. Hmm. This is what Jesus is saying to a, a self-righteous person in the gates of heaven. Before he's letting them in, he's, where's your check? It's written by your 
this is don't you know this is infinite sin debt can be paid by the blood of man it has to be someone of pure blood that hasn't sinned this is signed by you are you saying you're you're me I thought you believed in me that's what you're saying it's written by you signing for you in the front and on the back you also endorsed it and, and the, look at the amount the amount is your righteous works it's supposed to be infinite infinite sin debt can only get paid by infinite righteousness God is infinite it's a million dollars. That's a lot of money. Dollar bills. So, wow. Can you pay infinite sin debt with a million dollars? That's what you're saying if you're self-righteous. Yes, I can. No. The works has been burn burned. Send them to hell, which exists. Another one comes, which is going to be me. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me see your check here. Okay. This check is from me. I know it's from me because you didn't sign it. So you, you not signing this check. You're saying you're filthy, you're undeserving. Your, 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 your righteousness is filthy rags. You're scum. Not, I'm not saying Jesus Christ saying that, but you ought to be saying that yourself in your mind. You're scum. He's just going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You should be saying that in your head. You're signing it yourself. Ah, yeah. You know, I know. I gave you this check. This is from me. It has the infinite symbol. The symbol eight across means infinite. Infinite righteousness. Here's your name. Did you endorse it? Ah. Did you accept my gift? There will be people that those are the people that have the mind of Christ. Not good enough. You have to have the heart too. There are people in it. There's three people in heaven with these checks. I already told you about the first check. Not good enough. Hell. Here's the second one. Yes, you you had me in your thoughts. They honor me with their lips, but their heart was far from me. You had the inf infinite sign. This is a valid check. It's from me. But you didn't sign it. You didn't endorse the check. Well, let me endorse it now. Sorry. This is Jesus talking to this person that has the mind of Christ, but not the thought. Not You had the Christ consciousness. New Agers, but that's just fourth. You're not, you're Christ-like, but you thought you was Christ. Is it sinking in? Sorry. You're Christ-like. Everybody can be Christ-like. Well, if you're really, really you're not Christ-like. You're not Christ-like because you're not saved. Uh, see how sinful flesh, my, I'm totally depraved. Sorry for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the, the first check gets burned in the fire. And you go along with it. Second check, okay, you have the mind. You're sound in doctrine. You say the right things. Yeah, this is a check for me, but you didn't endorse it. And no, you can't endorse it now. My father told you down there to endorse it. No one comes to the father, not comes to me, unless the father... Who has sent him draws him to me. My father drew to you to me several times. Oh yeah, he could have drew to you more times, but he doesn't owe his grace to anyone. He gave, he drew, by this account, he drew to you over a billion times. So, why are you turning down free gift of salvation? Ripping the checks up. Or better yet, in your case, you didn't rip the check up. You chose not to endorse it. Why you didn't endorse it yet? You have to endorse it while you're down there in your flesh. Endorse that check while you're down there in your flesh, not while you're up here. It's too late. Sorry, hell. Second time. Third time. This is going to be me. Okay, Daniel Fernandez. I can tell you're bro your brother in Christ. Well, like I'm talking like Jesus Christ is a man, but of course he's not going to say this. He already knows this, but I'm, I'm breaking it down. Okay, pay to the order of you. This is a check for me. Because it's signed by me, not for you. So you agree you're a wretched, filthy creature like that guy before you that got sent to hell. But did you endorse it? I don't need to look on the back because I know you endorsed it. My father gave you the check. You endorsed it on February 8th, 2015. Good. You endorsed the check. He's not going to see it because he's God. He knows everything. But Yes, yes, God. Yeah. Remember, <sighs> just we want to go to heaven. Yeah, I endorsed it. It's my name. Emmanuel Fernandez in the back of the check. Come in. That's the simplest way I can, because I, I just said, I used that analogy because he said pay. Remember, every word is influenced by God. Oh, yeah, they they can do their own thing. The own thing is choose their style of writing. But I believe the Holy Ghost, certain passages says, okay, no, 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 John, you got to say pay right here. Remember, he's influenced by God, not controlled, demon possessed by God. He's influenced. So why did he say pay? That's why he said pay. To all you unsaved believers. Which one are you? You have your own check, 
signed by you on the front and the back? That's the first person. Second one, do you have a check? It's genuine, but do you endorse it on the back? Third one, this is to the same person. Do you, is check endorsed? Because it's the end times. Only imputed righteousness is allowed into the uh, gates of heaven. And now when you cash that check that's endorsed by you, now you're not imputed righteousness, you are righteousness. There is no sin in you. Jesus Christ like, yeah, okay, I see you and me, me. I see a mirror image. Let me take you to my father. Yeah, I see, I see my son in you. You're not in, the imputed righteousness has been cashed in. I cashed the check. Now it's not imputed. Now it's righteousness. No splot of blemish is entered into the kingdom. You have to be perfect. Is it sinking in? Usually my videos are not this long, but why did he make this video really long? Maybe it's important. I'm going to put this on my phone and witness to people. Because I'm totally depraved. But well, I might be afraid to tell them. No problem, son. Put this phone, this video you're making right now on your phone and witness to people. Let them be the judge. And the thing with witnessing, God could care less if you get through them and get them saved because you're not getting them saved. You're telling them the message. He's a messenger. Those people that you witness to, God's going to say, He gave you several times to, to cash a check and not cash, you're cashing it up in heaven to endorse a check. Why you signed it like it's yours? Why do you to try to pay for heaven on your own righteousness? And why you didn't uh, endorse a check? Mine will witness to you. That's why he get an award and you're getting a high degree of lake of fire. Yes, the degrees of lake of fire to the self-righteous people are the many times that people said to you, you're going to hell and you choose not to listen. You get a degree in the lake of fire. Remember, all sins are not the same. You get the degree of lake of fire you deserve. A grandmother who's nice but doesn't believe in Christ is not burning like Hitler. Don't tell me they're burning the same. God is just. Thomas Jefferson, who didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I don't think he did. I cringe for my country because I know God is just. Hmm. I'll let you figure that out. I'm not explaining everything. I come in peace when I speak. It's meant for war. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Endorse the check. You don't, you're not cashing it now. You're going to cash it in heaven. Endorse that check. Make sure that check is signed by Jesus in blood. Peace.